attention. Thank you. We're going to be doing lesson 37 and 38 today. Um, before we get started, um, something God's really been teaching me about is me being his sheep, and or even you being um, his sheep, and he being our shepherd. Okay, so when you think about a sheep and a shepherd, we don't really know a whole lot about them because unless you're a farmer or in the farmer family and you have sheep, you probably don't know much about them. But can you tell me some things that um, you know about sheep and why they need a shepherd? Or why would they need a shepherd? They like to like, wander off. They like to wander. Okay. Protect them. So the shepherd helps them stay within where they need to be. Okay. And what would you say? To protect. protect them. Okay. A lion comes like David. Shoot them. Yeah. Very vulnerable. Yes. Very vulnerable. Okay, Brooke Ann? Grace, do you have anything? Sheep? No. No? They're fluffy. Fluffy? <laughs> we're fluffy. Um, they're not very smart. They're, they're not very smart. smart. Okay, so what we're hearing is that they need somebody to take care of them. They're very vulnerable. They wander off. They need protection, and they need someone to, to feed them and take care of them. And so um, God's really been teaching me a lot in my own life. We are prone to wonder, meaning our hearts are bent towards sin. But the more we come to know Christ and learn of Him, our heart begins to change from being bent towards sin to being completely turned over to God. And so something I've really been asking God to do in my life is that, that He would be my shepherd and I would be His sheep. And that I would learn His voice and follow Him every move kind of like having like maybe earphones on or something and you hear him say now go to the left go to the right whatever I want to be that clear in every decision that I'm making or even just walking through life um, that I would be that I would heed his voice and so I'm gonna pray that y'all would learn to be sheep just as I'm asking God to help me okay father I ask that you would be these students God teach them the beauty of you being our shepherd and God, I ask that they would be sheep that follow your voice, that listen and heed to you. And God, that they would realize that they are prone to wonder apart from you helping them. And you know, I pray. Amen. All right, guys. Lesson 37. All right, go ahead and write that in the top right corner. Use green. Ooh, pretty. Okay, lesson 37. The first part is on the area of a triangle. Now... Does anybody know my formula for area of a triangle? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Length times width divided by two. Length times width divided by two. What we say for a triangle is actually base times height, okay? Because the base is usually the bottom, and then the height is usually how tall the triangle is. So we would, it's actually doing almost the same thing because you go length and width, okay? But we actually use different terms. Base and height divided by two, okay? Now... The way that we know that is, watch this. What if I was finding the area of a rectangle? Tell me what it would be. You kind Length of told me. Width. Length times width. Okay, to find the area of a rectangle, it's length times width. But watch what happens. What did I make? Triangle. Two triangles. Two triangles. Okay, so one triangle is what? Half of length times width, right? Which is base times height divided by two. That's how they get the formula. It's because a triangle is actually half of a rectangle. And if a rectangle is length times width or base times height, then we would take half of it. Okay, now, I cannot tell you how many times someone goes to do a triangle problem for area, and guess what happens? Here's what they do. And they leave that as the answer. They forget to half it. They forget to do the divided by two part. And I cannot tell you how many times I've marked a problem wrong because of this. Okay? So, I want you to make sure that you're um, remembering or even making a note to yourself that you need to do that. All right. Now, let's look at this triangle, okay? It's actually standing up, so to speak. This would be the base, and this would be the height, 
All right, let's look at this one. This one's a little bit different, okay? And we have the base and the height. Now, what about this one? Problem, because you can't take the height of someone that is leaning, okay? So, I want to know what is the height. We know that this is the base, okay? But so if there's not a height listed, a lot of times they'll put a dotted line in the middle because this is how tall this triangle is from top to bottom. Does everybody see what I'm talking about? So they will actually put a little height thing in the middle. And even sometimes they'll do something like this. Let's say you had an obtuse triangle like this, okay? And I know my base is this measurement, but I don't have a height. So guess what they'll do on this one? They'll put a little dotted line out here and a dotted line right here. And that's to show me from bottom to top of the triangle, that is my height. So always pay attention that you're getting the height. You are not to take the height of a slanted um, side, okay? And a lot of times Saxon will put an eight here and even a nine here and you'll be like, you'll get tricked and choose this eight, okay? So don't let it trick you, all right? All right, now let's do some of these problems. All right, the first one. All right, this one says five centimeters, seven centimeters, and then they have this dotted line. Okay? And this one says four centimeters. All right? If I'm doing area equals base times height divided by two, I need to take a base measurement and the height measurement. Which one will not be used in this problem? Seven. Seven. We will not use that. Do not get tricked. So what I would do is what? Base times height divided by two. That's the area of a triangle. The base is five. The height is four divided by two. Five times four is 20. 20 divided by two is 10. My answer would be 10 centimeters squared. Why do I have that square right there? Because it's area. Because it's area. You're exactly right, okay? And with area, you are multiplying two numbers. So if I did this, you go back, you mean. So you got centimeters here and centimeters here. And as you can see, centimeters times centimeters becomes centimeters squared, okay? All right, now, y'all do this one on your own. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. Okay. What is the area of this triangle? Yes. Whoops. See them. Squares. I'm sorry, I didn't put... These are centimeters. Yes. You should have gotten six centimeters squared is what you should have gotten. Okay, I would not use the five, I and I would take four times three, which will be 12 centimeters squared, and divide it by two to get six centimeters squared. Yes? Never mind. Okay. All right, now everybody understands triangles and what you're supposed to do. Why is a triangle base times height divided by two? Because it's half of a rectangle. Very good. All right. Um, what do you need to remember when you're multiplying for area? To put at the end. Squared. Very good. All right. Now, the next thing we're going to learn is about rectangular area. Okay? And what do we know about rectangles? What is the area of a rectangle? Formula? Length times width. You've already told me that. Thank you. Third time now. Good job. Okay, but the difference is, is we're going to do basically funky shapes, okay? So they give me this information, a 7 here, a 23 here, a 12 here, and a 10 here. Yes. You need a pencil. Well, this one doesn't have an eraser. 
you go. Okay. All right, so everybody look at this. Can I find the area of this funky rectangle? Yes. 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 But what do I need to do first? Um, fill in where the numbers are missing on the side. Yes. Okay. So basically what we're going to end up doing is making two rectangles. Finding the area of one rectangle and then finding the area of the second rectangle and then adding them together. Okay? But right now, I, didn't do that. I, didn't I need to know what this side is and I need to know what this side is because we don't have those measurements. All right. How am I going to figure this out? Okay? Tell me. Um, Let's do this the... one first. Right here. Okay. Um, there's 10 on the first side and then there's 23. So 23 minus 10. Yes. Okay, so we see all of this is 23. But from here to here is 10. So from here to here would be what? 10 minus 23 would give us 13. So then 13 plus 10 would equal all of it. You see that? From here to here and here to here would give us 23. So we know we've got it right. All right? Somebody help me from here to here what the answer would be. Yes, back here. Um, Almost? Not four, five. Five. Yes. Well, how did you get that? I did seven minus twelve. Yes, seven minus twelve. So basically, she saw that from here to here is twelve. From here to here is seven. So we need to know from here to here. And seven plus five would equal that twelve for the length of this. So does everybody see how you would get that? Anybody confused? Okay, now we're ready to work the problem. Do y'all want to break it here? Or y'all want to break it here? I didn't break it at all. You want to go down? Let's go down. Okay, you can do either one and you'll still get the same answer, but let's do this one. All right, now, the, the important thing is I'm going to say area of rectangle one. That's my symbolism or my um, things that I use to help me know. This rectangle, this R, is important for me because I'm working with the formula length times width. It's important that I remember that. So I'm going to put length times width. Okay, and so I'm going to name this rectangle 1 and rectangle 2. So then I'm going to put the area of rectangle 2, which is length times width. And then I'll just fill in those numbers, but I wrote off very beginning so that I know what I'm doing. All right, so what is my length? of rectangle 1. 12 times 10. So width and length. Okay? Um, I do not want to use this one down here because I already have the measurement set. Okay? This 23 is for all of this. So I want to use two sides that are already completely there. This 10 means this one and this 12 means this one. So that's what I'm going to do. 10 times 12 which equals 120. 120, and if this is centimeters, centimeters squared. All right, that's rectangle one. Now let's do rectangle two. All right, do I know a length of this and this? Yes, I do. 13 and 7. So that's what I'm going to do. 13 times 7, and 13 times 7 is 91. 91 centimeters squared. So basically what this means is that this is 120 centimeters squared and this is 91 centimeters squared. What will I do? Add them up. 120 plus 91 equals 211 centimeters squared. Everybody understand? Good stuff. Okay. We are right. Um, can you hold it just a little bit longer or you need to go right now? Okay, go. All right. Let's do one more, and I'm actually going to show you. I'm going to let y'all do it the first way that we just did it, and then I'm going to do it a different way. Okay. Put a 14 here, a 10 here, a 20 here, and a 5 here. And I want you to find the area of the entire shape on your on. Oh, on your on. <laughs> Sorry. Break it wherever you want it. Find the 
area of this rectangle shape. Yeah, just it's whatever. Meters actually is what this one is. Yes, very good. Yes, very good. Yes, very good. Yes. Done. Can't see. Close. Yes. Try again. Or maybe just one little thing you did. Good job. Okay. You should have gotten 170 meters squared. Okay. So, who can tell me what this one is? This line. Five. Who can tell me what this one is? Six. Six. Okay, I'm going to half it right here. All right, so somebody tell me the measurements you use for a rectangle one. Oh, I know what I did. I just what measurements did you use? 10 times 14, which is going to give me 140 meters squared. Okay? All right, what's this one? What's two, what's two measurements? I'm going to use 6 and 5, a length and a width, which is going to give me 30 centimeters squared. And I would end up getting 170 meters squared. I just wrote down one of the numbers. Oh, okay. Now, I want to show you another way you can do this problem than just breaking it in the middle. Mi middle. The middle. Okay? <laughs> what I want you to see is I'm going to fill in this full rectangle. We're going to pretend like this is a full rectangle. And then I'm going to take out this piece. Got what I'm doing? Okay. So if I were to take out this piece, what is the length and what is the width? Five times six, which would give us 30 centimeters squared. So this portion is 30 centimeters squared. Okay. But I want to know the whole thing and then take out that piece. Right? So let's do the whole thing. Do I have a full measurement here? Yes. Do I have a full measurement here? No, but I got one down here that I can use. 20 times 10, which would be 200 centimeters squared. Minus that little piece, and I would get 170 centimeters squared. See how you can do that? I don't care which way you choose to do. You can do this, take out this piece when you're done, or you can break it into two and do it. I don't care. So everybody got it? That's lesson 37.